So the last few slides explain the first three rules for changes to current assets and current liabilities. Now we're going to talk about the fourth one. Increases in current liabilities are added to the statement of cash flows. Now before we get to the fourth one, notice the direction of the arrows. So for current assets, the arrows are opposite. If the current assets decrease, then you add to cash. If the current assets increase, then you subtract from cash. And then when we get to the current liabilities, notice the arrows are in the same direction. A decrease in current liabilities means you must have paid off your liabilities, so cash also decreased. Now, we, And for the last rule, increases in current liabilities, the directions are both upwards. So when we do the homework, you're going to be doing this so much that you might even start memorizing the directions. But we're going to logic our way through this last rule. When a current liability increases. So the rule is, if a current liability increases, then add the difference to the operating activity section. And here's why. So we've got a partial balance sheet for Mary's mowing service. We're looking at the liabilities. And we're going to analyze wages payable. So from May to June, which way did wages payable go? Did it increase or decrease? Well, wages payable increased by $100. So the last rule we discussed was this. If a current liability decreases, then subtract the difference from the operating activity section because cash was paid to lower the current liability. So remember, on the when, when analyzing current liabilities, the arrows are the same direction. So logically, the opposite is true for this rule. If a current liability increases, then add the difference. Remember, the arrows go the same way. But why, you may be asking? Well, this is where it gets a little complicated. On the next slide or two, we're going to show a journal entry that will make it a little bit more easier to understand. But if the current liability increased for wages payable, then cash was not spent at the time the expense was incurred, but rather it will be paid at the later time, resulting in a liability, and the liability being wages payable. So we got an expense, which makes net income go down, but there was no resulting decrease in cash. So accordingly, even though net income was reduced by the expense, in this case, wages expense, cash was not reduced. So we have to back out the non-cash expense from the income statement. How do you back out or remove or undo an expense? Well, an expense is subtracted, so you have to add it back to net income. So that is why if wages payable increase, you have to add the difference to cash flow. So we will look at a, a single transaction that will make this a little bit more clear. So imagine a company had only one transaction in a month. The company recorded accrued wages at the end of the month. Remember, accrued means something's accumulated but not yet paid. In this case, wages were owed but have, have not been paid yet. So wages expense at the end of the month is recorded. $1,000. We'll just use $1,000 in this example. And wages payable also increases because payday is not until the next month. So how much cash flow did this company have? Remember, this is the we're going to assume this is the only transaction they had during the month of February. Well, cash wasn't affected at all, so cash flow was zero. But remember, the statement of cash flow begins with net income. So how much net income did they have? Well, if this is the only transaction, they have no revenue and they have $1,000 expense, so they have a $1,000 loss, a negative number. So remember, this $1,000 loss, a negative number, is at the, stop, at the top of the statement of cash flows. So how do you go from a negative number, which is the minus 1,000 net income, to a cash flow of zero? Well, you're going to have to add the increase in the wages payable. So since the expense subtracted from net income, to undo it, we must add the $1,000 to the $1,000 loss to the $1,000 loss to show that cash flow was zero. 
So let's do an example. Here's our statement of cash flows we're working on. We're going to assume net income was $830. And right now we're only going to worry about the account in red, wages payable. Of course, we'd have to do all of them, including AP and interest payable. So in, uh, wages payable increased. And we said if wages payable increase, then cash flow must go in the same direction. So we're going to add that $100 difference. So this company's cash flow from operations was $930.